Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to correctly use a displacement texture from Polygon material in Maya with Redshift. Before we get started, let's take a look at the material we'll be using. It's Ground Asphalt Broken 001 and is easily one of my favorite ground textures here at Polygon. Um, it's brilliant for demonstrating this displacement, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, I've already got the 4K version saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link um, below the video. As a note, uh, I would recommend getting the, the 4K version if you're going to be following along because with displacement you really do want as much detail from the texture as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we're going to be doing. You've probably heard of a bump map before which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. It results in a far more realistic material. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to replicate that effect in Maya with Redshift. First thing I'm going to do is use our material converter to bring in our material like we've done in the past. So let's get the plane selected, hit the little uh, converter icon there, navigate to where we keep our material, which in my case is here, and then it is, hmm forgotten the name of it that's not promising is it <laughs> um, there we go ground asphalt broken 001 so with that selected uh, the material converters say that it's found it it's already identified that I have the scene set up for redshift uh, good so let's load in the material so with that loaded we can now load up our hypershade and take a look at what the converters done um, I'm also going to assign the uh, material to the ground plane. Uh, to do that, by the way, you just right mouse button and then assign uh, or right mouse button for graph network to, to bring up the nodes. So with all that done, um, select the last node in the little tree here and collect, uh, click this in out connections button and that will bring in the displacement nodes because for some reason they're not there by default. And uh, yeah, we're now, we're now good to go. So let's take a look at what we get when we hit render. Uh, well, yeah, that's quite hideous. So, <laughs> um, it, some work to be done. So, let's uh, first of all adjust the tiling because, yeah, that was way off. Uh, should have done that before even rendering, to be honest. No, it's not coverage. My bad. It's this repeat UV. Change that to well, whatever suits your scene. In my case, a, a value of 15 worked well. And now, if we render, this is what I what I wanted to show. So there's our material, yeah? Now it's quite clearly a good PBR material. We're seeing different levels of reflectivity on different parts. It's uh yeah, for 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 some uh for some instances that would, would work perfectly well. But for a close camera shot like this, it very obviously is just a flat material on a flat plane. Um it it doesn't look good. So what we need to do is change a few settings to make use of the displacement texture that's already been brought in by our converter, okay? So to do that, click on the plane, go down to the redshift uh, menu, and then we've got a few options that we can make use of. Tessellation, which is basically subdivision. Um, redshift just uses the, uh, the, the gaming term for it, really. So enable that. And this will allow you to adjust various settings. I think by default that's on around five, or maybe three, something like that. So we'll leave that on the on the default setting. Um, and yeah, that's it for tessellation. Uh, for displacement, you will just want to turn it on. So just to explain what these are doing, that's subdividing our mesh, giving us way more geometry to work with, and that is displacing it. It's taking that geometry following the displacement texture and creating lots of bumps and whatnot. Now if we hit render, we should see a different result. I wish it would stop doing that. In fact, I'm going to turn on the interactive render in a sec. I don't know if it works well with this. But we're starting to see a difference now. You see how the, the floor is starting to be... Uh, it's not a flat surface anymore. It's not quite where we want it, but it's not a, it's not a flat surface. So... Um, I don't know if the interactive render is going to work with these settings. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but we'll, we'll give it a try. So now um, let's start by increasing the level of subdivision. Now be careful here, because every time you 
move up a level of subdivision you're going to be increasing the amount of resources that you use and you can very quickly reach a point where you're going to use up all your system's memory um, or GPU's memory um, and Maya will crash, your system might freeze, you, you, you've got to use it sparingly. But for me I think a value of 9 worked pretty well. Um, yeah the IPR is not making any difference whatsoever is it? Okay I'll just do it the old fashioned way and just hit render. Okay, so that took a little while to build the scene. Um, uh, so I, I paused the recording for a moment. But straight away, we're really starting to see a difference, aren't we? I mean, compared to that boring flat plane that we were looking at previously, that's that's a night and day sort of difference. Um, now, there's two ways to adjust the strength of this, because at the moment, the, the effect's just a little bit too strong. You can use the... Uh, displacement node within the hypershade or uh, you could change the maximum displacement here I prefer to do it via the hypershade so let's go into that have a look at these values um, ah, and you've got this scale that's the one to adjust so by default we set it to, to 0.25 when we bring the material in but on this one I found it worked best with about 0.18 so let's render again and see the difference Very nice. Yes. Okay. So that's that's looking good. Um, I, I like that. I like I like that sort of effect. Now, as a final step for uh, performance reasons, I would try and lo once I've got the look that I want, uh, which which is where I'm where I'm at now. I'm liking this. Um, you want to try and lower the subdivisions to see what you can get away with, um, because. I mean, the render time wasn't too bad. It was only 32 seconds, but I was pausing the recording because it was taking ages to calculate the geometry. So let's try that at a value of 8 and see if we can get away with that. Yep, that certainly wasn't too bad. Um, what I'm also going to do is increase this minimum edge length. Um, that will kind of work in tandem with the subdivisions, and if you increase that value, you'll... Uh, you'll bring it down as well so I'm going to try rendering with that yeah that's that's the sweet part I, I didn't even have to pause that it built it straight away and we're still getting an acceptable level of of detail yeah I like that we will call that done so in summary we've taken a material from polygon.com brought it into Maya using our material converter made some adjustments to the displacement settings um, to get the, the the look we were after also did a, a little bit of optimization with the subdivision and edge length uh, settings uh, and then rendered it out with redshift